Hello, this is Elijah Ignatieff, Planetary Guardians, and we are here with the Planetary Guardian Teams 002 and uh, session number six. And we are looking to co create a synergy map in the inflow matrix operating system. And there are three, four levels there's the choice map, that's the inside of you, there's the flow map, that's the outside of you, there's the synergy map, which is the team or the organizational map, and then there's the harmony map which is the community map. So right now we're coming up with a value system, a uh, specific way of creating a value system for a synergy map. And why don't we have a check-in and maybe say if anything's happened in the last week, any insights around values or maps or anything that's occurred to you? Uh, Michelle, would you like to start? Sure. Um, this last week I have stopped. I'm, I'm taking a staycation. So... Um, I stepped away from work. I was chatting with Emmanuel a little bit today and uh, I have been intentionally um, not planning my days, but just I've stayed off social media for the first few hours of my day. I, did, I don't pick up a device or anything like that and um, beyond checking for time and temperature and stuff like that. Um, and then just kind of going, oh, that caught my attention and wandering around and doing all that. And it's been lovely. So that's been kind of um, nurturing the, the awareness and the imagination that keeps showing up as a theme. Um, and playing with a little bit of freedom and what, what's life like without this, this over here that I've been struggling against. So I've been enjoying that. Thank you. Emmanuel. Uh, life's been good. I've been getting to spend some time at uh, 7 Broadway West, which has been a refreshing uh, change of pace and change of scenery. As far as the values, I don't know if anything stuck out over the past week, but uh, everything seems to be in line. I don't know, things that we wanted to happen seem to be happening, and I think the world is a lot better of a place than COVID's led us to believe. If people would just even pretend it's normal. Maybe their pretend imagination will end up manifesting to reality so i'm hopeful that everyone can kind of get back on track sooner than later because this whole thing's been negative for a lot of people and their businesses and their lives and their anxiety and i think if we just pretend it's okay we'll be right so okay thank you Lori. Um, it's been pretty exciting for me with some transitions that are going on here and of course, being able to spend in time, in person time with Emmanuel, but even our meeting this morning, we kind of worked with a circle saying, how can we organize this through what we're learning through Elijah to take this to a next level? And he's really getting it because we even talked about the Harmony map today and how it goes out to the world. Because a lot of us, we have a big picture out there. We're seeing what the difference is in the world that we can make via individuals, via the learning center. But the one that really, I had this sit on my desk a lot lately, Elijah, because I've never seen, I have never seen this map. Okay. So when Michelle just made that comment about, oh, we can do a one hour session planning and you know it's specific to an hour, there's no dragging on with a bunch of bull crap and all this stuff getting us off task. I go, oh, that is totally something that we could use as a tool, organizing anything, whether it's Emmanuel and I organizing something, Sylvie and I, us in the Learning Center, Michelle and I, we've got something going. So I really, really want to learn more about that map okay. and how we can utilize it in having our meetings because I've been in a lot of them. I have a young woman that's helping out in the office here. So I'm, tr I'm working at trying to use these tools with her so that it, it engages me more as a teacher to be able to show it to other people because you can understand it at a deeper level but it's how how do i teach it and i don't mean this is a bad thing how do i teach it at a grade six level so that people can understand it even though it's deeper in the heart and soul our heads still get in the way mm -hmm. so that was impressive to me with this because what we can accomplish in one hour to start really transitioning is very impressive to me. Thank you, Lori. Sylvia? Awesome. Well, first of all, you're holding up a map. I don't recall seeing that map. 
forgetting that map that you just hung up. This one? It was an email attachment uh, before the last meeting. Okay, I'll have to go back and look. The one hour um, session planner. Oh, maybe I do have it. Okay. Okay, so um, this week, I guess I've just been spending a lot of time outside. I don't know if it's intentionally, but I have been. And it just seems really clearing and just good for the soul. Um, not that, you know, any of the values or anything stood up, stood out, um, you know, extensively or anything like that. But, um, yeah, just thought I, I'm peaceful and ready to have some action and just, yeah, get moving on something. <laughs> Look very uh, in a loving environment. It's good to see you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, everyone. Okay, so I, I'm maybe I'm uh, adjusting maybe to, to the needs of the moment here, but if we do a synergy map with the four of you, and your homework was each of you to do the synergy map, right? Uh, which, which we can go through, but we did go through a little bit last week, but I guess because Emmanuel wasn't here, we didn't uh, take it to the, to the place where we would have uh, an actual map form by all of you. I'm wondering, maybe we could dive into the map that I just sent you. I could screen share, put it up and sort of go through it because that is one of the sort of, I think essential tools, practical tools. Like a lot of things we're doing are conceptual arrangements that kind of set the scene, set the field. Um, but this map specifically is like the, I think the jewel in many ways of all the maps in it, it is because it brings together a lot of the cards and looks at one hour being you know the, the main focal point for let's say if you're a professional and you're taking someone through a session and you're charging by the hour or you're bringing someone into the learning center and you bring groups into the learning center and, and, and if you look at you know this is going to take one hour and this is what we're going to do with you within the new paradigm toolkit there are game boards maps card sets processes and software so if you look at the software, card set, game board, and maps, they're, they're specific tools. Process is more of the human element of taking people through a process. So the tools are used to take three people through a process so they can have the experience of whatever the facilitator wants them to experience. And that map that you just brought up, Lori, is the, you know, the, the main focal point. So I, I put this question to you. Because, it, I mean, if you want to truly create a synergy map value system for the learning center, it makes sense that everyone who's going to be on that team is involved and participating in that. Because if you guys come with a synergy map for the value system, well, here's the map, map for the value for the learning center and all the other people who aren't involved and weren't involved uh, are going to, you know, it's, it's a very different process. That, then you have to get a different level of buy-in than if they went through the process themselves. So would you, would you like to shift that to today's session? Is that? Mm -hmm. I'd like to, yeah. yeah. And the reason I'd like to see that too is because we had a list of Emmanuel's values, but we didn't know where they all fit on the whole wheel and he only had nine values, not 10. Okay. So, so I wouldn't mind that because I have them all written down. Okay. But I don't know if Emmanuel's are in the right place. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to, uh, you're still muted, Manu. I'm going to pause the recording here for a second and I'm just going to go uh, look. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. If you see my ear, it's because I have two screens and I put it over on the big screen. funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this pen. There we go. Okay, so can everyone see that? Right. Yep. So what we're looking at, each one of these sections, so can you see my little pointer there? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so each one of these sections is five minutes. So we got 12 times five, so each one is five minutes. 
And if you, if you look, there's a number of quite a, quite a few elements here. <laughs> if you look on the right hand side, you have the community space, group space, sacred space, one on one space, and personal space. So as a facilitator, you would like if this once this is software, you would just press one of those buttons, and so you would be determining the space that you're in. And then on the left hand side, where we have family field, intimate field, friendship field, business field, service field and social field, you would press one of those buttons. And I don't think, are, are any of you familiar with that model? I don't think I've introduced that at all, have I? Oh. I, I am. Yeah, Lori, Lori's probably uh, knows it. Okay, but the, the model on the left is, is another one of the inflow matrix models. And, and what it is, it's, it's like the meta conversational field model. And so it, it's, the. the, the Lori has a card set of 72 cards that break down conversations very specifically that are that are linked to the purple time cones that you see there. See right here? Yeah. Those are where you break down into the conversational types. But here, what we're doing, like right now, we're in a business field, right? We have a transaction. I'm, I'm teaching you something and you're paying me money for that. Now, if I was doing this and I wasn't being paid, <clears throat> this would be a service field. This is more where you're doing something, you're doing specific work, but you are not receiving anything for it. That's of service. Uh, friendship is just when you're hanging out with your friends, and uh, family is specifically when you're ha hanging out with your family, your blood family. You might have a spiritual family if you want in, in that regard. Um, and then intimate field is looking very specifically at sort of more of a a very close connection with somebody that you're very intimate with. It's a bit different from the, the other fields. And then the social field is the larger, broader context of sort of every other field that you're in where you're kind of uh, uh, not doing business, not with friends, not with family, not with any of them, but you're just seeing people in some sort of social situation. And now you can have these fields immersed in one another you can be with friends in a social field. You can have your friends and your family together. Um, but what it is, is it's the beginning of looking at strict boundaries and, and having the distinction between, you know, you probably uh, know that you don't, there's a saying, you, you might not want to do business with your friends. You know, like there's a very big distinction between, no, this is my business. This is what's happening here. And that's different from if I'm just hanging out with my friends or my family or other people. And so the, these six fields are very general, but it's almost like if, if, if you want to do business with someone, you have to bring them into the business field. Like as soon as they come into the learning center, it's not a social situation, it's a business. They're coming in here to, to conduct business, but you may have it set up to be a service. You may be giving a free course. You may be doing something in there that doesn't cost any money, and then that's a different kind of field. So then on the outside, if you look at, um, there's another model where you look at the start, the setup, the buildup, the crescendo, the ease out, the connect and unify, and the finish. This is a, another model within the inflow matrix. This is a seven step process. And in it, it's like a bell curve. It's like you're starting whatever you're doing at the beginning and then you have to set up whatever you're doing to reach the crescendo to reach the highest thing you want to teach to reach the best thing that you're going to do with the group you set it up and then there's a build-up to get to there and it's kind of like this pulse and then once you reach that point the highest point in whatever it is then the energy comes down a bit, that's the ease out. And then there's this part of connect and unify where you're sort of taking that part that you created with them and building it into something larger and then you finish it. And this, this, this is a kind of a, a unique process that within the informal is embedded. I mean, you could do, let's say seven events in a row, a starting event, a setup event, a build event, crescendo event, an ease out event, connect and unify event and a finish event and then with within each of those events you can have the same pulse 
So the essence is that you are, as a facilitator, you're taking the group or the person into a bit of a higher state and then taking them back out, but maybe at a little higher state than they came in. Now, does anyone have any questions about that right now? Nope. Does that make sense? No. Is, that, is that sort of a... Okay, so the, there's, there's 12 sections of five minutes, but as you can see, there, there's seven steps to the process. So the start and the finish are a little bit more <clears throat> cut and dried. You know, start here, we're starting. You might not uh, do anything that formal, but now if you look at the center point, this is where you bring into account the idea of spells. And the green are the values, each of those is a value, and then the purple is a conversation type, and then the blue would be a choice lens, a flow lens, a synergy lens, or harmony lens. Now, we haven't got into those yet, but uh, you may be familiar with them because of what Lori has shown you maybe with the card sets. At some point, uh, I'm sure you will all want a card set because it's a big part of being here I'm tooling. But what we're looking to do is program the field as a facilitator ahead of time in terms of what conversational type that you're going to use. Now this is again something which we haven't got into yet and it, is, and it is at the core of the new paradigm toolkit and that is being able to distinguish conversation types. And I'm just wondering, Lori, uh, are you, um, do you have your card set there? I got which ones? The convo cards? Yeah, do you have the convo cards? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm just just wondering does that does anyone there not know about conversation types okay so Emmanuel it's, it's you never heard of it before and uh, Lori's never brought it up with you before Sylvia's so seen them a little bit yeah I've, I've seen, seen them a little bit, a little bit. And Michelle you have as well right so each one so there's sets so Remember, Emmanuel, how we talked about the red and the conversations we have, and then the three? They're upside down. You might want to just make Am sure. Am I? Okay. It's hard to tell when they're round. I know. I know. <laughs> so there, for example, can you guys read that? Yeah. For example. So that's a marketing conversation because they're red? That's good job, Michelle. We may, we're about to lose our Zoom, so I'll, I'll reconnect you as soon as it goes. So there's another one. And then Elijah sent us these, and I'm just going to hold them up because all he did for us.